I can't believe we're actually here, but we are in the main menu ahead of game one and it says play game. You know what that means? That means we're actually starting this freaking playoff game. This is a miracle by the way that the season started for us. This is a freaking miracle that we are actually playing a playoff game that we've been given the start. We do have a short leash because if you look on the right side of your screen, there is not a whole lot of leash with that line score. The only answer to that is boost the line score by having really good games. And let's have a really, really good first round against the Boston Bruins. So of course, before we go into this, let's just take a quick series preview by first looking at our team and our top scorers. So Martin Natchez is the season's top producer or the Hurricanes top producer on the season. 101 points in 78 games. Not too bad. 36 goals. Not terrible. Andrei Svechnikov coming off of a previous season last year in which he had 52 goals in 82 games. He has significantly dropped off in the goal scoring category. 88 points in 82. So a less than stellar season compared to last year, but the numbers are not terrible. Jonathan Druin is putting up 76 and 82. Then you got Timo Meyer, and we can just go on. And on down the list, Tony D'Angelo is the leading scorer on the blue line. And then look at that. Even in just 69 games played, Evgeny Malkin has 48 points as one of the top 10 scorers on the team in just 69 games. Nice. And we just keep going on down the list. You can look at everybody's numbers this year and our contribu contributors. So if we look at the goal scoring, it's not as impressive as last season, obviously. Like I said, Sveshnikov being a 50 goal scorer and we had multiple 30 goal scorers last year i don't know how many we had over 30 but we had many guys get over 30 this year we just had three guys get over 30 meyer was pretty close and then it kind of tails off from there but still there is goal scoring in depth so we have the depth to be able to get contributions up and down the lineup and we even have it coming from the back end nine goals here from d'angelo 11 from connor murphy who including should be uh, there should be a goal in that category where he put it in my net <laughs> I, I could go on and on about that and then you can see how we get contributions from the defense pretty decent numbers actually from all of our defensemen on the goal scoring column and then in net there is of course ourselves and Adelkovich. we've been given favor to start this first round series against the Boston Bruins with a very short leash once again Two shutouts this season. Both came in the simulation. So just put a little asterisk beside that. And then uh, 893 save percentage in 42 games. We're not, we're, we're pretty much rivaling Alex Nadelkovic, although he does have a slightly better save percentage and his GAA is a little bit better. But uh, he hasn't seen too many more shots than I have. I mean, he's seen a decent amount of shots, but he's let in a decent amount more goals than I have as well. In seeing that many more shots, I have the only goal scored for a goaltender. One goal. <laughs> I have the only goal and 21 penalties in minutes. <laughs> we know why that is. So here's how things stack up for the Boston Bruins. Okay, a little more firepower from the Boston Bruins. Jack Eichel, first line center, just won the Stanley Cup in real life. And in this universe, he's going to be trying to do it with the Boston Bruins. So Jack Eichel, the hometown kid, basically the Massachusetts native playing for his hometown team. The Boston Bruins locking up 44 goals in 90 games. That's really decent numbers right there. So we're gonna to have to have our eyes peeled for the man wearing number 10 in Boston. And then down the lineup, Connor Brown contributing 80 points, almost a point per game player. Pius Suter playing center left wing. Charlie McAvoy contributing a solid 12 goals from the back end. Chandler Stevenson, 40 goals in 81 games. So another 40 goal scorer right there in Chandler Stevenson. And then Anthony Duclair, Connor Garland, Andre Kasha, Braden Shen, Alexander Wenberg, Ross Colton, Adam Lowry, Brandon Carlo, Brett Leeson, Pierre Oliver Joseph, Fervari, I'm not even gonna say that name, <laughs> Brett Harrison, Arcabello, Ro Roman Schmidt. So it looks like they get a lot of their goal scoring from up front, right up front on the top six. It kind of tails off quite significantly actually. Look at how quickly it tails off toward the depth side of things and they don't get as much contributions. Offensively speaking from their defense, it is 
it ends at Charlie McAvoy, basically. And then, of course, in net, Jeremy Swayman, who has become kind of a standout goaltender, although he was one-upped in real life, if we're talking real life, one-upped by Linus Olmark, who had a tremendous regular season for the Bruins. Forget a little bit about that playoffs. <laughs> I'm not ripping on anyone by saying that, by the way. And then Aiden Hill, who just won the Stanley Cup for the Vegas Golden Knights in the real world, but this is an alternate universe in which that never happened. And Aiden Hill is now backing up Jeremy Swayman. I expect Swayman, who played 68 games and is rocking a 906 save percentage. Sorry about moving that. 906 save percentage in those 68 games. This guy is going to be pretty good. I hope we do not have another Jack Campbell situation on our hands with this one. And speaking of Jack Campbell, he's playing in the American Hockey League. So he has been relegated to playing American Hockey League games for the San Jose Sharks organization and playing for the Barracuda. You know what the good news is? The San Jose Sharks did not make the playoffs. So we don't have to worry about Jack Campbell and getting Campbelled this year. <laughs> that is not going to be a thing unless, uh, I guess, one of the goaltenders in... Uh, in the, the game, in the playoffs, pulls off a series just like Campbell did against us in the Stanley Cup Final with the Oilers just a season ago. And if you're wondering what Campbell's stats looked like in the regular season last year, he had an 894 save percentage in 50 games played. So he didn't have tremendous regular season numbers, but you know what he did do? He tore it up in the playoffs in 23 games played. He was rock solid. Three shutouts, a 937 save percentage, under two goals against average. It was hard to beat that guy in that series against the Oilers. I do give him full credit for basically carrying the Oilers to a Stanley Cup victory last season. And of course, this little series preview would not be complete without a look at the playoff tree. So this is what is in front of us. First round, it's going to be New Jersey versus Columbus. As far as the East is concerned, Carolina versus Boston. We meet once again in the playoffs. I'm going to have full control over this series as far as Carolina's net is concerned. Ottawa versus Tampa, that's a rematch of the Eastern Conference Final last year, if I remember correctly. And then Montreal and Philly rounding out the East. I had the burp, sorry. And then as far as the West is concerned, Dallas and Minnesota meet again in the first round. That's just like in real life this past year. The Avalanche and the Ducks will meet. The Canucks and the Flames will meet. And the Oilers play the Kraken, who I also think met in last year's playoffs, but I cannot remember the bracket from last season's playoffs. Another thing to note is should we advance to the East Final, there's a possibility of an East Final rematch from last season because Ottawa is in the playoffs. And there's also a potential meeting with the Montreal Canadiens in the East Final should the Canadiens advance all the way to the East Final. We also have to advance to the East Final ourselves. Should we win our series, we are going to take on the winner of New Jersey and Columbus. So we know if we win our series, which we have to win four games first before we can worry about that. But should we win our series, we already know who we're potentially looking at playing. And another thing, there is a potential Stanley Cup final rematch again, because look at who's on that west side of the bracket. Look who's on the east side of the bracket we could have Carolina and Edmonton for the third time all time in the Stanley Cup final. How awesome would it be to meet up with the Oilers, a Jack Campbell-less Oilers, and beat them in the final and get sweet revenge for last season. Ah, uh, welcome back to the Stanley Cup playoffs. I can't believe it myself that I'm saying this, but we are back here starting games. Look at the crowd, they're going nuts. They are absolutely thrilled to see number 80 is tending that goal crease in meaningful games after the regular season has concluded. I never thought we would get this game. I didn't think we would get this series. This is going to be far from easy. There's a lot of stud power on this Boston Bruins team. We start out making our first save of the playoffs. It's a calm one on Anthony Duclair and prepare yourselves. This may not be an easy series. I want to make up for last year. I want to make up for last year's missed Stanley Cup opportunity. And I'm glad because we know now that this is not our last game in PNC Arena as a goaltender for the Hurricanes. This is not it. We, we, got, it, we got at least two games in PNC Arena left as a Hurricane, minimum. The nerves are a little bit flowing, but that's just natural with these big games. 
in the playoffs, but we've been here before. We have this experience now. We can lean on that. And hopefully Coach LaBelle can lean on me for a whole run again to chase down the biggest prize in hockey. That's a huge rebound. That was really bad. Why did we give that rebound up? McAvoy with a great feedback door. Well, we're squaring up to this beautifully. Great aggressive depth on Eichel. I mean, he's got no one to pass to, so it's basically, you know it's going to be a Jack Eichel shot. The hard part about this is we reject it. Yeah, we pop it right back to Charlie McAvoy. Now, I had to be prepared for a shot because I really did think a shot was going to come. Who in it? Connor Brown is going to slide to the back door. No one picks up Brown. That's a lazy stick by Murphy. Not a good positioning play either by Lindell. And I'm just kind of caught out on this backdoor play. It's wide open for him. God, there's a lot of Bruins jerseys in the crowd. Holy crap, that's pretty realistic. Unfortunately, all the people that moved down here from Boston. Um, man, that was a tough goal. We cannot afford to have too many breakdowns like that. That's also partly on me for giving up such a huge rebound. But yeah, we got to have some help on the backdoor feed like that. Defensemen have got to cut that down. Can't blame me for that early goal. McAvoy just scored on his own goalie, so we've got it right back. How about that? Charlie McAvoy creates a goal on one end, and there's no replay of that? Why is there going to be... No Hold on. We're going to instant replay for that. Thank you, Charlie McAvoy. We will take this as they try to bat that out of the air. McAvoy makes a good play to prevent the feed. Oh, wait. Is this McAvoy? No, that's Go Connor Garland. No, it is McAvoy. It is McAvoy, actually. It goes off Garland off the pad. Then McAvoy sweeps it right in. Great job. So I know what that feels like, Jeremy Swayman. I can tell you all about it because I've had the same thing happen by Connor Murphy earlier in the season. Yeah, McAvoy smacking the stick on the ice. He is so frustrated by that. Not, not great leadership material right there, Mr. Captain. And that is a massive gift. And in a rare one, the Carolina Hurricanes have one goal on zero shots, quite literally. Zero shots on the stat column for the Carolina Hurricanes so far, but one goal. So that's tremendous uh, shooting percent. Would you call that shooting percentage? Is th can that even be considered shooting percentage? Those are the kind of breaks we're going to need if we're going to go long in this playoffs. We want to have a huge run to hopefully a Stanley Cup final appearance again. We all understand, though, just how hard it is to go that deep in the playoffs. And all, not only just to get that far, but to also win the games necessary to win the Cup if you do get to the fourth round. I've gone over it so many times, but we did. We, Oh my God, we are scoring the strangest goals. Connor Murphy has one. And he was the leading defenseman scoring in scoring for the Hurricanes in the regular season. He has a goal early in the series against Boston. And I think we are now two goals on one shot. I mean, the shooting percentage is immaculate for the Hurricanes. Yes, wave them rally towels over your head. Carolina, raise up North Carolina because we have a two to one lead. This is a really odd first period, but last year we did get Jack Campbell. I can't say it too many times because we really did get Jack Campbell. And we know that won't necessarily be the case. At least we won't have to face Jack Campbell himself in the playoffs this year. Now that's not to say that a goalie can't get hot in the playoffs should we face a goalie at some point in the postseason that pulls off what Jack Campbell did last year. My God, everything is going in. Jeremy Swayman, is not prepared to play this game. Dog pile on Jonathan Druin. The Hurricanes are out for blood in the first period and they have smelled it. They've smelled blood in the water and they are feasting. Gave up the, the goal and we have just, the team has responded. They picked me up, they felt really bad for me. So they said, we're gonna go out and we're gonna get three quick ones. Almost make it four. Boston, you are facing the President's Trophy winners. So don't forget that you are playing the best team in the National Hockey League, as far as the regular season was concerned, you may be playing the best team in the whole playoffs, depending on how I do and how the team does. I mean, I may not even have to worry about my save percentage coming out of this game and how many saves I make. This team is scoring at will. Now, we just forced Jeremy Swayman into an early pull in the series. I mean, we get to their goaltender this quickly in a series. This could be, this could be a very short-lived series for the Boston Bruins. Well, I think Swayman is still in the net. They would go to Aiden Hill should they pull Swayman, I would imagine Swayman would get the pull. Four goals this quickly into a game. There's no way you last giving up a fifth one. You give up one more and your night is done. Domi can't put it past Swayman. A rare save for Swayman in this game. Eichel pass it off to Duclair. 
save, big pad, rebound, but it wasn't spat right back out to a Bruins player. I can live with that. A one and done chance for the Bruins' first line, who has gone back to his defensive position wisely. Back to Matheson, a big crank on, but it never hit the net. This one is now Svechnikov in the slot area. A rare save again for Jeremy Swayman. Druin has it lost to Natchez. Good work by the Hurricanes. And the Bruins are flustered, but they will skate at center circle. McAvoy bumped away as Eichel skates toward the boards with it. Centering feed to Charlie McAvoy trying to shoot. Natchez has it now. Again, another faceoff win by the Hurricanes. Gosh, Swayman is just holding on for dear life in this first period. I mean, the saves that Jeremy Swayman has made in this period, a lot of them have been shaky. Even just the saves he's made, we almost we had Swayman completely fold out of his jock strap on that move, and somehow the puck never went in. Will the Bruins see a shot on net before the period ends? Here's the expiration. We make a save, and that will just add to our stat chart. We really need every save we can make to make up for the fact we did get scored on early in this period, but a period of pure domination for the team in red. Well, I would not blame Boston if they did switch netminders coming out of that period. It looks like they have not. I think Swayman is still being given a chance in this game, but it may be one of those cases of coach says one more and you're done. So the pressure is going to be on Swayman to keep the puck out of the back of the net if he wants to stay in the game. I mean, at this juncture, do you really want to stay in the game? You have been shellacked by one great chance after another, and your defenseman also scored on you. So I'd be pretty heated if I was in the Bruins net, but thank God I'm not in the Bruins net for this game. Duclair has options. Saucer pass back to Jack Eichel, and we steal the shot away from Eichel. No goal for number 10. Lindell under pressure, stolen by Duclair, Connor Brown, and we've got our legs on it. That was a bad turnover, but I pick up the team. <laughs> it looks like my goalie is scratching his butt. And then Connor Brown, number 30 there, is staring in complete disgust at what's going on. All right, this time if we have a chance to break it out, if we do, we haven't. We have not one possession. So be ready. Shot. Oh, it's wide. That is the most unfortunate freaking... What the hell was that? That's a bad bounce if I've ever seen one. Right off the end boards, right to Eichel. The game just... I mean, to be fair, we were gifted a bounce, but what the hell? All right, can I see some saves off the rush? There we go. That makes up for the last goal, kind of. All right, D-Boss, you kind of need to find a way to win this face off because apparently if the Bruins win it, they'll fling it off the end boards, get a great bounce for their number one center, Jack Eichel, and then he'll put it into the open cage. That's a dumb penalty. That is a really dumb penalty. See, now I'm a little bit afraid Boston may have some slight momentum now. They might have some momentum in their favor. They get a favorable bounce. They get a goal out of it. And they've cut the lead in, um, in half. Yeah, they've cut the lead in half. And now they have a power play goal. They can make the lead just one goal with this power play if they score on it. Lots of talent. Lots of ability on this Bruins team. And probably on this power play for that matter. So we know what we're going up against. Oh my God, get over. Get halfway through the kill and then do the other half. Just take this penalty kill in halves. Oh my God. Oh, I got there. I got on the, I got, oh my God. There, this has been a period of really awkward bounces and I just recovered on that one. I'll tell you, Boston might have a game plan. Just missed the net intentionally because it's worked out on one chance and it almost did on the power play just a second ago. Oh, someone picked that up. Eichel has, please clear it. This game is causing me undue stress right now. Connor Brown trying to surprise me with a quick shot off the rush. We should be able to get this right back down the ice, and that is going to kill the rest of the penalty, I assure you. Our guy is coming right back out of the box right now, so a great job to kill it. Meyer out of the box, has possession, and down low to KK. Now we can get working back at 5-on-5. Five five. No one can really seem to pull up on their forehand. There's a shot from Meyer. Good, good. We've got our first line right back out there. I think they're matched up against... They are matched up against Boston's first line. So first line versus first line at 5-on-5. Five five. Connor Brown... Drop to Duclair, to Eichel. You know, he's willing to shoot the puck. Bruins like to get it to McAvoy and let him carry it through center. So we know McAvoy is taking a lot of these plays and making the rush play happen. He's doing a great job of not allowing an easy zone entry gain through center. Connor Brown. Oh, please bl be blocked. I don't know if that's a save or if that got blocked. 
Clever little play here by Duclair to go to the guy in front. Uh, it is Connor Brown again. He's been all over this game, had his fingerprints on this one. He goes behind the net, very clever, as I'm having to maneuver post to post, then Suter as he turns around. This buys me a little bit of time, him pulling up on the forehand. It gets blocked, so I get a lot of help by Duclair blocking this. I was going to stack the pads out of desperation, didn't need it, and went off the knee, and then wide. I think I would have still had a save on this had it got through. I don't want to find out. I'm glad it never got through. This Bruins team is making me nervous because they're not going to be an easy team to keep off the score sheet. Drive wide and center it. Behind the net. They love that behind the net play. That's making me scared. Connor Garland lost to Larkin. So defense need to pick up on that. The Bruins are going to take the puck behind the net any chance they get. They love to go low to high. And they've been setting it up on multiple, numerous occasions. Stevenson is on his own. Stevenson on his lonesome into the glove and will take a risky face off here, but with Stevenson crashing the net, I kind of had to. I would like to see this more from the AI. Lone man rush, take a shot off the rush. I like that more. I don't like these weird bounces off the inboards, off the glass. I mean, I swear with Boston at this point, it almost looks like a set play. They might as well set it up that way. Yarn Crow turned aside by Swayman. That's a huge save for the Bruins goaltender. And it's going to be poked free and back to center. Yarn Crow can recover there. Headman pass to Kokaniemi. Kokaniemi has it on the opposite side wing. Back door, blocked away. Kept in by D'Angelo. So a good keep, a wind up failing, but Lindell will get the shot through eventually. Final seconds ticking away. Bruins will not get one more shot on net like the end of the first period. In fact, it could be Carolina, but there's the horn. 20 minutes remains in game one of round one versus the Bruins. Well, lay it all on the line for game one right here. Play your best period of the whole season right here of the whole playoffs. Play a really good period here. And let's just take the victory and take the first game in the series if we can. That's got to be the objective. The offensive firepower kind of died down in the second period. Hopefully we didn't score all of our goals in the first period. Just for my own sanity, it would be... Eichel drives play into the zone and then quickly loses it thereafter. D'Angelo can get it quickly up. Martin H is opposed by Jack Eichel. Eichel had won the faceoff temporarily. None of that matters now. The Hurricanes will get it behind the net. And then Connor Brown loses it to Svechnikov. A couple of turnovers between both teams in a row there. Natchez rolls off of his defender. No one can pull up on the forehand. Svechnikov does, and he pots it on the forehand, off the post and in. Well, if that doesn't ring the bell on this game, I don't know what will. Three goal lead in the third period. You would hope that's enough. It should be, it should be enough. That should be enough to hold us for game one. We should be able to take an easy victory in game one as long as we don't implode for the remaining 15 and a half minutes. In 15 and a half minutes, a lot can happen in 15 and a half minutes. A shot by Stevenson over the net. Suter will shoot now off the blocker. Who is that on the point? Lindell has come down from the defense. Meyer goes to the point to cover for Lindell. Bit of a cluster right now for the Hurricanes in the attacking zone. Can't seem to again get sorted out in terms of who's going to take a shot. Chandler Stevenson can try again on the left wing. The left shot. Stevenson pulling up. It goes off of my pad. I couldn't get full control of the puck. Stevenson blocked Garland. And it will be Connor Garland scoring his first of the playoffs. I could have really done without that goal. And I just made a poor adjustment. And the Bruins have made us pay for poor defensive play in our own zone there. Eichel will fling it wide. So hold on to our horses here for a second. The Bruins have quickly made it a two-goal game. Just like that. Uh, these games are never over until they're over. I can tell you all about it. Nearly handed Jack Eichel an easy goal by basically just being a stupid idiot. Nothing else is new in that regard. Right back out here trying to get something done on the scoring side of things. A save on Eichel. More coming from Eichel, certainly. A save, a rebound, cleaned up beautifully by Matheson. Jack Eichel again. Drops off to Stevenson, blocked. Oh my goodness. Don't do that ever again. 4.20 left to go. Blaze it. We're still leading the Bruins for now. Brown. Suter picks it up. Oh, what a, goal. Lucky, what a lucky goal for Pius Suter. Here we go. The inevitable breakdown late in the game. I just, I don't even know what to say. This is, 
Why is this a one goal game right now? How is this a one goal game? How have we imploded like this? This was actually looking to be a pretty good game, statistically, for me speaking. Statistically speaking, this is going to be a solid game. The net is empty for... Oh, the net's empty for us. It's a delayed penalty against the Bruins. I was expecting... I don't know why I was expecting a Boston empty net, but either way, I'm not going to the bench. I'm pretty ticked off. I wouldn't go to the bench anyway. I'm pretty ticked off with the fact that we've given up two goals in this period. We, ha we started this period with a 4-2 to two lead. And it's, it's now a 6-4 to four lead because of Timo Meyer. I'm not even really all that impressed by that goal. Empty net scenario won't even really be necessary at this point for the Hurricanes. We won't even need the empty net. We got six goals. That should easily be enough for us to win this game. Oh, there's an injury. Oh, there is an injury. He's writhing in pain. Oh, it's Max Domi. Ugh. Max Domi in pain on the ice, clearly, from this demolition hit from Charlie McAvoy. Oh. You know, there's worse players that could be out with an injury. <laughs> and he's down the tunnel, so it's not good. Well, maybe we've lost Max Domi for the long term. It's a pretty big hit to absorb. And clearly, down the tunnel, this could be it. There is a potential for a long-term injury to Max Domi on that play. Could be out of the lineup for some time in this playoffs. First line back on the ice for the Bruins. They are in last-second desperation mode right now. So you know they're going to be trying to probably... Push the effort to put a fifth one behind me. Nate just can't hit the wide open net that is empty. Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt us, that missed empty net. It shouldn't. I mean, a two goal lead should be enough at this point. Bare minimum. Uh, the, the four goals we scored should be enough. The four goals we had starting this third period should be easily enough to win the game. But we like to make things hard on ourselves. I would love to score that empty net goal, but it's just not going to happen in this game. Svechnikov. He air mails it over the net, but it doesn't matter. Who cares? The only thing important is that we have taken game one over the Boston Bruins, a one to nothing series lead. That's all that I fight for. I'm just fighting for that opportunity to win the Stanley Cup. That's what I'm here for right now. And we will surge in front of the home fans. I'm a little bit pissed off, though, with how that third period went. Wow, that minus 11 is extremely generous because I could have been graded a lot tougher. After that game, 7 8 9 save percentage, four goals on 19 shots. I just didn't get the breaks where I needed them. We could have easily held the Bruins to two, even one goal against. A shutout was doable, maybe. You know what? The important thing is we have the 1 0 series lead, and that is one step closer. It's just one win, but it's. It is another step in the right direction toward trying to win that ultimate Stanley Cup that we didn't win last season. Oh God, oh Coach LaBelle, why are we in the office? Listen, I want you focused, push your limits and rally the, rally the team. We can win this and bring the cup home. Oh, oh my God, I nearly had a heart attack. You know, I, th <laughs> I thought you were bringing me in here because you were gonna name me the backup for the playoffs. We're ready, Coach, we're gonna win this and I'm gonna make sure everyone on the team gives it their best. We're winning the Stanley Cup this year. We are not failing. Failure is not an option, Coach LaBelle. Failure is not even in my vocabulary. 